to tell you, I'm so thrilled that you're here. When I woke up and saw this gorgeous day, I said, nobody's going to come inside. They're out for us bathing. So, Pat Ahern, I'm sorry my niece was not able to come today, and uh, certainly sends regards and is thrilled with the, the book. So forest bathing, what on earth does that mean? When I first heard it, I was at a conference in Weston, Massachusetts. It's a, a place called Kripala. If you ever have the opportunity to go there, it is a yoga retreat center, and they do a lot of educational programs. And on a Friday evening, my girlfriend and I had come out to, she came from Pennsylvania, and I came from Shrewsbury, and we went out to find out, I thought, learning about hiking and yoga. So it's Friday evening, we both arrived, got settled, and we're sitting in a room about this size, and it was very zen, very nice music, waterfall in the room, and we're all sitting in a circle on the floor, and then the teachers started to introduce themselves and then say, okay, we're all gonna start tomorrow morning and we're gonna forest bathe. I looked at my girlfriend and I said, are we going to be naked in front of all these people taking a bath? I, I was like stunned. I don't know. So they went on to explain what forest bathing meant. And what it means is going out into the forest, walking very slowly, breathing in, opening your senses, which we don't often do. We take for granted our senses. It began, the name forest bathing began officially by that name in the mid-1980s. And that is a time when computers became high, everyone was using them, high volume in work, in your own personal use, so computers were everywhere. And that meant people were inside. So in Japan, the government was starting to realize and recognize, do you know what? Our people are really sad. Doctors are saying they're getting a lot of depression complaints where they never did before, and we got to figure this out. They, they didn't initially think, oh, well, it's, they're in the building and playing on the computer or working. So they, they hired a huge selection of doctors and scientists. They literally spent millions of dollars trying to figure out a way other than medication or in conjunction with medication. Medication certainly is necessary at times, but as a partner with medication, forest bathing. So they did this research. They started to have people coming in. And Japan is an amazing country. It's like 73% is land in the forest. It's a very beautiful country. All right, so what they, studies now are throughout the world. Not only US, but all over Europe, Australia, and they're all really buying this process of this idea of forest bathing. It doesn't cost you anything. You go into the woods. And as I said, it's not running into the woods. It's not how many calories can I burn? How much exercise can I get? It's de-stressing. You can walk a quarter of a mile, a half a mile. You walk up to a tree, you find a tree. Maybe you lean up against that tree. You close your eyes. Take a deep breath, keeping your eyes closed. You're listening to the birds. If you're lucky, there's a waterfall or a brook side of the, where you're standing and within a very short time minutes you feel wow I really do feel better um, I do use it now truly if I have a bad phone call or a bad something we all have stresses in our life something you didn't expect I literally say going for bathing um, I went over, went over to Dean Park I live across from Dean Park and I often go there and often the pictures are, are taken there so what they, when, when you are breathing in the forest air, it increases our immune system, okay? It's trees, if you stand near a tree, trees give off a chemical, it's a compound, and it's called phytocide. And phytocide, for the tree purpose, is to keep insects and bugs away from, and viruses away from hurting that tree. But for human beings, through all of this research they discovered, if you stand near a tree and you breathe in the air, this phytoncide compound increases your natural killer cell, your T cell. We all have T cells that keep us healthy. Uh, when people have undergo chemotherapy, their T cells go down, and that's what makes people get sick, 
viruses or someone has a cold or something neck and you sit next to them, that's what makes them more susceptible to illness. So this natural killer cell benefits from this tree, being now this tree, and that compound is in the air. Okay, so that's one really, really good benefit. So in summary, put down the phone, shut off the TV, sorry Cindy, put down the glass of wine, and go outside, okay? Take a walk. Um, I had decided several years ago that um, I was starting to get lazy as I retired. You know, you seem to do a lot more sitting and then less activity. So I decided to go on a health kick and I decided to walk. Uh, you're not hurting yourself by walking. Welcome. Hi. Hi. And so I decided to start walking and um, I started to like, this is really good. This is really fun. And of course diet changes and so I started to improve my health. And then following that year, I kept doing it, kept walking, I became possessed to walk. That's when I went to Kapala, and that's when I found out about forest bathing, and it's like, oh, that's why I'm walking so much. It's just so good for me overall. In 2001, the EPA in the United States did a survey of Americans, and the survey was quite large. 87% of these, of these people that were analyzed and, and in, the, in the research spend their day 87% indoors. And in addition to that, another 6% in their vehicle. So we're all doing it. We're all spending too much time inside. We can think back, uh, an early, or early forest um, Americans, American Indians. I did interview an American Indian chief from New Mexico, and that interview is in my book. We can all know the famous Henry David Thoreau. He was probably one of the first people that really started to write about it and talk about it. He encouraged people to get outside and to search for something more meaningful or powerful. How do you forest bathe? I would strongly suggest, if you are going to learn about forest bathing, I am not a certified forest guide. I am definitely knowledgeable about forest bathing with all the research we did. But you need to go with a forest certified forest guide. I know that the Shrewsbury Library had a woman. Her name is Linda. I don't think I won't even try her name. It begins with a P. I've got her phone number if you want. She at the library took a group and went forest bathing. She's a certified forest guide. In addition, the Audubon Society has some tours, but um, Tower Hill, I would strongly recommend. They have a certified guide. And her name is Nadine. I met Nadine, and there's a very long interview with her. She is the first certified guide in New England, in all of New England. The class is very several thousand dollars. They have to spend an entire week in the forest with people training of what to do, what to look for, what's safe, what's not safe, what's beneficial. And she's amazing. She does uh, many tours at the at Tower Hill. So that's a great, great place to go with her. And it's not that you're walking six miles. I think it probably is maybe a mile or a mile and a half. And what you do, she says, okay, she's got a group of little ducklings. Okay, what I want you to do is, she gives you what they call intentions. What I want you to do is stand where you are and I want you to turn and close your eyes and wherever you want to stop, you stop. And then everyone in the group, six, eight, ten people in the group, we stopped wherever we wanted. And then we opened our eyes, and we were all over the place. And then Nadine would say, okay, Susan, why did you stop there? And Susan said, well, I heard some children playing, and I was kind of fascinated by what they were saying. And you said, well, I heard a waterfall. And it really was comforting to me. And I said, well, I heard the birds, and I wanted to listen to them. And someone else said, well, I smelled the flowers. So it's using all five senses. So we're listening to the birds, the water, the children. We're smelling the flowers. It's, it, it, it heightens our senses. And then we talked a little bit about it, and then off we go to the next intention. We walk a little bit further. So it's not a physical, you know, it's not limiting to people who, you know, maybe aren't walkers. So we go to the next one and area, and she says, okay, go and find a tree, any tree you want. 
So we all scurried off and stayed there for 10 minutes. Do you know how long 10 minutes is? It's a really long time. So we walked over our tree, and um, she said, you can name it, you can talk to it, you can do whatever you want. So I walked over the tree, and my tree, and I didn't have a name for it, but I, I stood near the tree, and we want you, you know, to touch, so there's that, another sense, to touch the tree, and look at it, really, look at it well. How, when is the last time you looked at a tree? Look at it, touch it, smell it, maybe there's a scent, and name it. And then, when she, she has a little chime, and she'll, play the chime, very calm, and then we come back. And my niece Lisa, who is the author of the book, she named her tree. And she picked a tree that was on that had fallen. And we're going, okay. And she named it Charlie. And this big long old tree was there on the ground and she said to her, she's had um, emotional and um, other issues, which are in the book she clearly talks about. And to her, when she saw Charlie, despite Charlie being dead, she, there was new growth. There were flowers and there were branches and trees growing from Charlie. So to her that meant, hmm, I can do that. I can have a better life. I can make changes that are better. So that was her experience. And Charlie, there's a picture of her and Charlie in the book. And so the intentions is probably six of them or so. And so that's what forest bathing is. And you're saying, maybe, anybody think of the, the sense of taste? How the heck we do that? Well, Nadine had a little pouch, and as she walked along, she was picking up safe items, and she put them in the little pouch. And when we got to the end, our last intention was to experience taste. So we sat down, and she had little teacups, and there's a picture in the book, and uh, all about the tea ceremony. And there's a tea recipe. So if you want to make your forest tea, there's a recipe in the book. And so we tasted. Uh, to tell you uh, the truth, it was not a strong taste. It wasn't anything that, like, wow, oh, that's that, or that's this. But it was uh, a, a nice way to end the forest bathing. All right, so we want to see, we want to hear, we want to touch, we want to smell, and if you can, taste. All right, so there are two rules. Don't get lost and be safe, stay safe. Be with somebody, unless you're at a place like Dean Park, it is safe um, to walk alone, in my opinion. But it's always good <coughs> to bring your cell phone, uh, insect repellent, or whatever there, you know, that you need to keep yourself um, healthy. So uh, in my book, there are pictures of, of people. Um, I had a group of four women who had had cancer. And we went to Tower Hill and introduced them to the Tower Hill. I introduced them to forest bathing. And we sat by a tree and we had a nice experience. And it was, it was encouraging for them to, to try that and to go there. All right, <clears throat> so I would strongly suggest going with a certified guide. And I will say that um, the Audubon does not have a certified forest guide, of which I hope to, you know, I hope that they do because I really think that there's a difference with a certified guide who has had training so I'm saying to go into the woods and find a tree, go in and sit down by a, uh, by a babbling brook. In closing, this has been a three-year journey for myself and my niece. Lisa has, uh, is an amazing writer. She went to college for writing, and she graduated with journalism and world affairs. I've been an avid photographer all my life. For my friends, they know. They are always getting pictures from me. I just recently, as of Wednesday, can now say I have been to all 50 USA states. Our last three USA states were Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota, and we just came home Wednesday from that trip, so it's pretty amazing. You can forest bathe with your dog, and Nadine at Tower Hill does that. So they bring, you bring your dog with you, and you go on these little journeys. You don't ask them to do intentions, but she teaches you how to work with your dog so they get the best benefit of being in the forest. So, so remember what forest bathing therapy is versus what it is not. And I think these six things really say it all. It is more about melatonin and less about adrenaline. So more about calming yourself down. Melatonin is an over-the-counter medication, natural in our body, that helps you to relax and sleep at night. If you're having trouble, you can take a melatonin. I'm not prescribing that, I'm just merely saying 
It's more about melatonin, less about adrenaline. It is more about calm and less about competition. So you're not racing to get to the end of the trail. It is more about natural wonder and less about human made in entertainment. So less about the TVs, more about, and the computers, more about enjoying the forest. It is more about noticing the weather and less about whining about it. You certainly can forest bathe in the rain. I have definitely forest bathed in the snow. You have to be careful and have the right shoes on, boots on. It is more about mental gain and less about weight loss. We certainly want to lose weight to keep our, or maintain our weight. And it is more about slow healing and less about quick fixes. Does anybody have any questions about what I've gone over? So in summary, please try to get a certified forest guide to take you on a, a walk to learn about it hands on. And if you, you only need five or 10 minutes, if you have a bad day, even if you go outside by a tree in your yard, try it. Just lean up against that tree and close your eyes or get a seat and sit down and breathe it in, close your eyes, and you will definitely reap the benefits. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, I didn't want to, okay, so this list here is pretty profound. If you haven't seen it, this is all of the things that forest bathing, how it will benefit from, help benefit you. Boost your immune system, it reduces um, concentration of cortisol, which is a hormone that is released when we're stressful, your body releases cortisol. It reduces your blood pressure, improves your mood, reduces stress, it increases the ability to focus even with children that have ADHD. Okay. Important. It increases energy and improves sleep, increases the flow of energy, overall increases sense of happiness. You feel happy. Decreases hostility. So if you're angry, um, I had a friend that came with me to, a, I've been on several of the forest bathing walks, and when she got there, she was like, ah, 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 ah. she's stressed and got so much on her plate. And you know, when we went to the first intention, you didn't have to participate, so she went, no. You know, and she passed, they, they'll pick up a leaf or something, and so we pass it from person to person, and you talk, or you can not talk and pass it on. She didn't talk through the first two. By the time we got to the last tea ceremony, she was just another person, another person. This is not going to go away. This is here to stay. If you see some of the articles of places that are writing about it, you can pick up, well, Women's Day Magazine. Microsoft has discovered this, and they have three meeting space tree houses that they have their executives to come and do planning. And, and improves their uh, intention, attention. They also house plants. So you, if you can't get outside, house plants are extremely important. Doesn't have to be a huge display, but having a few house plants. And how do they know that? They took some high school students and they put them in a room such as this, maybe a space like this, and there were no plants or anything. And so they, they had them staying there. They had them try to do a, a, a project or a test or something. And then they took some plants and put them around, and they put another group in there. And it was far superior to the results. Uh, let's see, it, it said that they were, their mood was better, they were more calmer, they did a better job on their test. There are forest therapy organizations in the United States, Japan, Australia, UK, Scotland, and Korea. There are 20 prominent nature therapies and from eight countries working on best practices for forest bathing. In Scotland, if you go to the doctors, and this in Japan has been for quite a long time, but just recently, a few months ago, in Scotland, if you go to your doctor in Scotland, you say, <coughs> hey doc, I'm really sad, I'm really anxious, I don't know what to do, I, I'm not like this. He or she might say, on a prescription pad, to forest bathe two times a week. <coughs> so it's taken that serious. And again, it can be in conjunction with an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety, but it's definitely being accepted. Our medical world is just overwhelmed with people and patients, and, and this is another way to help to reduce 
the, so many of the symptoms. AARP, US News, TNG, World Economic Forum, Forum, Wall Street Journal, every one of these. And when I pick up an article, it's there. And people send me on, on Facebook, did you see this? Did you see this? So it's serious. It's not a, a hoopla. It's not a, a, something that's going to go away. It's here. So I hope that um, you enjoyed what I had to say, learned about it, understand it a little better. And I hope that you do go um, to one of the programs. They usually have a small menial fee, $40 or something like that, to, to do one of these at Tower Hill or um, I know the library. Like I said, the library did it maybe less than two months ago. I have um, two versions of the book. It's the same book. I have the first copy, <clears throat> which has a few, like I, I never picked up Shrewsbury, comma, Massachusetts, so I left out the comma. So if grammar is important to you, do not buy that one. It was a few mistakes I made, and the printing made a, made a mistake on double printing a sentence on the back. Otherwise, it's a perfect replica, and it's less. And um, I also have the video that I'll put on again. The video that was playing is a 19-minute video that has, I don't know how many pictures. In the book, there are more than 200 pictures. And this has the pictures and some beautiful music. I'll put it on right now. And some t-shirts, My, it's very clever. My girlfriend who was kind of helping us, look at the forest bathing. The forest is in the tub. So she said, we have to do a t-shirt for that. And so that's just kind of a fun, oh, fun thing. Yeah, a little upcoming artist. So if you're interested in that, or if you just came for the information, I'm thrilled because I'm a firm believer in it. I'm always at Dean Park, and I like to explore new forests anywhere I can. And I hope that you will also. Any questions? I'd be happy to autograph any book if you are interested. Um, or I would just say thank you so much for coming. And how come you're here on this gorgeous day? <laughs> Get out in Forest Bay. It's just so beautiful. So I so appreciate you being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you.